Hi, in this video I will show you how to use the graph editor in Frog. It would be a good idea to watch the video about the preview functionality before you watch this video. So the graph editor is kind of the heart of Frog. The interface has these three lines that you see in the middle of the screen. The first line is for individual activities. The second line is for group activities. And the third line is for whole class activities. You see at the bottom this timeline and it indicates how long we think the activity will take. We can also configure the graph. For example, we can choose a name and we can determine how long we want uh, the graph to be. For example, 30 minutes. By holding shift and dragging the scroll wheel on your mouse or two um, fingers on the, uh, on the mouse pad, uh, you can zoom in and zoom out. If you see down here, you'll see that now the x-axis shows uh, 5 minutes and 10 minutes. Um, the lowest uh, band here gives us a view of the entire graph and we can drag these box to scroll and you see how the time changes. Or again, you can use the scroll bar without the shift key to scroll once you're holding it up here. Uh, we can also uh, add new graphs. We can copy the current graph, delete it. We can also export it either as a file uh, or as an image, and we can import uh, graphs from other places. So let's start by adding a simple activity. Uh, let's, for example, add a chat activity. We double click on the line where we want the activity, and we'll say that this is a chat. Now we can change the length by putting our mouse at the end of the activity and clicking. While I'm holding the mouse key, you see a bunch of indicators uh, telling us when the activity is starting at the very left, zero minutes, uh, how long it is, five, six, seven, uh, how much is left of the class. So if we do seven minutes, then there's 23 minutes left. Uh, if I now inserted another activity, you can also hold uh, your mouse key and drag it. And again, you see this indicator showing that it's two minutes between this activity and the previous activity. The activity lasts for five minutes and there's 16 minutes left of the class. If you want to move the graph because the graph is bigger than the screen, you can drag the activity onto this uh, dragging field on the right or on the left and you see the graph scrolling and you can then position your activity where you want it. Let's delete this activity and let's go back. And I'm going to zoom out a bit. There are many different uh, keystrokes that can be useful in this uh, view. If you press the question mark, you get a little help, helper window which tells you about the different things that you can do and the different keys that you can use. So we've added this activity and now we need to configure it because right now it doesn't have any type. It's just uh, an activity that takes six minutes. So to do that, we open the right sidebar. We can either press the W or we can press this icon here and it shows us a list of all the installed activities. Let's say that we want a chat. Well, we've already called it a chat, but the frog doesn't actually know that it is a chat. So we can use the preview functionality, which we've seen in a previous video, to look at the chat activity. And once we're happy with that, we can choose to make this a chat. Now, some of the activities have obligatory configuration information. The chat does not. You can give it a title, but you don't have to. So our graph is now green, which means that it's a valid graph. It means that it can be run. But we can try to give a title. For example, what do you think about current affairs? And if we want to preview our activity with this configuration, we can press the preview. This is only available once um, the activity is green. And we see here a chat with this title that we just gave it. If we want some other things we can do is holding shift and up or down to move 
activity between different levels. We can uh, press A to add another activity at the same plane and the same length, or 1, 2, 3 to add an activity on one, the plane 1, 2, or 3, so for example on plane 1, and so on. Uh, you can find more about these keyboard combinations in the help menu. Let me delete these two. If we put the chat on the second plane, you'll see that our graph is red. Because a group activity needs to have a group, and Frog does not know which group you want to put the students in unless you define it. In Frog, we have a concept of operators, and there are three different kinds of operators. A social operator generates groups or social attributes because they can actually also be roles, they can be used for other things. But the most typical thing is to use it to put people in groups. To create a social operator, we press the letter S and we move our mouse until we decide where to put the operator and then we click. Again, this is an undefined social operator. It doesn't have a type. By clicking on it, I can choose from the installed social operators that we have. And for example, I can say I want random groups. And there are some configurations. So I will say I want random groups of size 2. Now we have an operator that is generating these groups based on whoever students are logged in at the time that this operator is running. We need to connect this operator to whichever activity needs this grouping information. So I click on the operator and I drag onto the activity. You see now the activity is active because I'm over it. And I let go of my mouse and this activity is now connected to the operator. And if we go to the configuration, we see that the attribute for grouping is automatically chosen as group because there's only one available. But if we had several, then we would have to choose ourselves. Notice also that all of these connections have a directionality. This is a link that goes from an operator and into this activity. If we made a connection the other way, we could see that it goes out of the activity and into the operator. This is not what we want. So now we have an activity that's on the group plane. We have a group and uh, we have students in groups of two will be able to chat with each other. Another thing we can do is to pass information from one activity to another. So let me uh, leave the chat there, but let me add another activity. Let me add a brainstorm activity. Brainstorm uh, is an interface where you can add ideas or you can vote them up or down, as you can see here. So we're going to add this brainstorm activity. We should, we'll let the students submit new ideas. In this case, first of all, we have to connect it also to the social operator. And you see now that the group is automatically filled in. But it's still complaining because in this case, the field guidelines is required. So we will say, um, how can Switzerland become more sustainable? And we'll give it a name. When two activities are available to students at the same time, in the same time that you see here, they will be shown on the screen simultaneously. Now we want to uh, have a full class activity. So we'll double click on this line and we'll have a, a way of organizing these ideas that are generated by the students. To do that, we can choose a common knowledge board uh, activity. So this is a 2D board for placing items. And we can display a background image. So let's find an image that is good for organizing ideas. For example, we could do a SWOT analysis. And let's see how this looks in the preview. Great, so we have strengths and weaknesses. 
what we now want to do is we want to take the ideas from the, in the group brainstorms and bring it into here. And so we'll need another product operator. And we'll do the operator that is called aggregate items. We have the choice of selecting only the top items by score, but in this case, we want all of the items. So we now want the output of the brainstorm. And we want to take this and feed it into this activity. Note that the location of the operators is not important. I can hold shift while I click on the operator and drag it to position it somewhere else to make it more clear how the flow of information happens. And the only thing that's important is which link goes in and which link comes out. Let's say that we wanted to add a chat here as well. And in this case, we'll have a whole class chat. And now let's see if we can run this graph. To do so, we go to the teacher view and we choose to create a session based on uh, our graph. We can only do so if this session is valid. If it had been read, we would not have been able to create a session. To make this a bit more interesting, we'll need some students. I'm going to make the teacher view smaller and I'm going to add three students who are logged in. I'm here using the trick of uh, using aliases for localhost, the dev1, 2, and 3, and 4. Uh, you can read about this on the readme page on GitHub. Um, then I'm giving the, the code for this session, which is IHTP, which I can read from the teacher view. And to log in, I'm just simply writing question mark login equal and the name of the student to log in. Now we have three different students, and we can tell here that there are three students in this session, and we are ready to run our graph. So when the teacher wants to start a session, he can click start. What will happen is that it will look at these two activities, and it will see what dependencies they have. It will see that they both depend on this social operator, and it will check whether that operator has been computed already. If it has not been computed, it then checks whether this operator has any dependencies coming in. In this case, it doesn't. It only depends on the global list of students. And so it will run the operator, generate the student uh, groupings, and feed them into these two activities. The same thing will happen when we transition to the next activities. What has happened here is the operator has been computed. These two activities are active. And we can see the three students. They have been grouped by group. There's a group attribute. And we have two students in group one and a student in group two. So the students in group one can, of course, chat with each other. And they can add ideas to their uh, idea board. They can also vote up and down these ideas. And once the teacher is happy with uh, how the students have been working uh, in groups uh, and wants to move this along to the next activity, he simply clicks next activity. And as you'll remember, the next activity was this uh, SWOT board with the ideas from the two groups um, aggregated. And so they, we now have a chat that is shared between the whole class. And the class can collaboratively reorganize the ideas in a way that um, fits their, uh, their ideas. So this was a quick demo of how to use the, the, the graph editor uh, to create a, a simple graph and then go into the teacher view and actually run a session. I'll quickly show you a few other features of the teacher view. One thing we can do is to click on operators or activities to get some debug information. For example, if we click on the operator, we see the configuration data that there's a groups of two. We see all the input data. So it gets, for example, a list of student IDs and student names. 
And the output of this operator is a list of groups. Group 1 has these two student IDs, and group 2 has, the, has a single student ID in this case. Then we can go and look at, uh, for example, the, the brainstorm activity. Again, we see the configuration with the text uh, prompt uh, and the fact that students can submit ideas. We see the input data, which is again this group structure, and the output data, which is the ideas that were generated by the students in group one, these two ideas. Group two did not generate any ideas. And of course, we could trace these through the operator that transforms them and then into the activity. Looking at the final activity, um, we can actually export the data. Once we finish up the graph, now the product has not yet been computed, but if we finish the graph like this, we see that the product has now been computed and we have this option of exporting the data, which downloads a zip file with the different uh, learning analytics and uh, process data. We can also download a log of uh, all the log messages in a CSV file, which we can open in Excel, and which shows us the different actions that students uh, were taking and the teacher. So we see here the teacher started the session uh, at a certain time, the students uh, made chat messages, they typed new ideas into AC Brainstorm, uh, they uh, typed things into the chat and so on. And if we want to uh, play around with the graphs um, for debugging, we can simply restart a session, which will simply reset all the data and restart activity from the beginning with the students still logged in. So if I restart the session now, you'll see that uh, this is recomputed and the students are back at stage one again. So that was a brief view of uh, the functionality of Frog and uh, I hope this uh, gives you enough to begin playing with it. Thank you.